How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this really sci-fi abstract, this crazy looking loop in geometry nodes. We're gonna be destroying some curves and having a lot of fun. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with EV and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so here, here in Blender, I'm gonna go ahead and get in a plane. That's all we're gonna need there, and let's hop straight into geometry nodes. So let's go down and kill that, and then I'm gonna click new. I'm gonna delete the group input and we're gonna get in a circle curve. So we're gonna search curve circle, plug that into geometry. And then now we're gonna get in a join geometry. Get a join geometry, plug it there and duplicate. So shift D on this curve circle and plug it into the geometry. Technically this isn't geometry yet, but that's how this node works. And let's bring that radius up to be something like this. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again plug it in the geometry, and we're gonna bring our radius up one more time. Now for on the resolution of these three, we're just gonna go with 45 to make it a little more round on each of these. And you could just use a value node if you wanna change them all at the same time, but I'm gonna, I don't need to do that. So now we have this, let's go ahead and turn this into some geometry. So we're gonna do curve to mesh. So search, curve to mesh. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate one of these right here. And then I'm gonna bring my resolution, resolution back to 32. Plug this curve into the profile and that's gonna give you your thickness of the, uh, of the toruses in a sense. So bring that radius down to something like that. Pretty cool. Now let's start destroying this. So we're gonna get in a separate mesh. So, I mean, separate geometry and we'll get a random value. Random value, it's right here on point, change it to face. And on float, change it to Boolean so we can just get one uh, value here. Plug in the selection and boom, now we have this. And we can bring that probability down to have some more fun. Let's add some thickness to this. So add modifier. We're gonna go here to solidify and we're gonna bring that solidify up. And we also need to add in a bevel to make this look really nice. So add the bevel. And then right here, let's go ahead and play with what that bevel is gonna look like. This is really what's gonna help us catch some of that light. That bevel is really important. So we're gonna just play with however you want, how smooth, how sharp, but there we go. We now have this whole thing. What I wanna do now is set up my camera. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a camera, and Shift A, curve, circle. So click on your camera and we'll go here to your constraints, add a object constraint into a follow path in the target, click on that Bezier circle. So now that camera is linked to that circle and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit, hit S and scale that circle to fit in this middle circle. Now I'm gonna click on the camera here, go back to your constraints and click on follow curve. And then here in the camera, I'm just gonna hit R twice. So let's see if we can see here. I'm gonna hit R twice and then R once to rotate it. We just kinda want this camera to be pointing the right way. And then I'm gonna hit zero to go to camera view. And let's edit this a little bit more. So here in the camera settings, I'm gonna give my focal length to be really, really big. I mean, really, really small. And then I'm gonna hit R twice again to kind of edit this. So clicking on that camera, go back to your constraints. And if you play with your offset, that's gonna be how you animate this, um, this bit. So that's really cool, it's really quick. Now that we set up our camera rig, let's just go ahead, I'm gonna go back to my layout and I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm gonna hit Alt D. That's like Shift D, but Alt D makes an instance rather than a separate duplicate. And then bring that up and I'm gonna hit Alt D again. And I'm gonna bring this down. This is really just scene design. And then now 
go back to our camera in the constraints and now we have a drastically bigger scene here and it's just really really cool and when we add lighting the lighting is really gonna goof up um, with this whole scene so it's really cool now that we have this let's go to our two cycles and I do want to make sure that motion blur is on and then bring that shutter down. I believe we need to bring it down. We'll see once we actually render. But bring that shutter down a little bit so there's not so much motion blur, just a little bit. All right, now let's go ahead and start lighting and shading this whole scene. Now, first off, in your cycle settings, here are my light path settings. So total, everything right here except for transmission. We actually bring that to one as well if we want. Everything one except volume zero. And then turn off your reflective and reflective caustics. That's really going to help your render times here. And I'm going to give myself 500 samples. It's going to be pretty low light. Now we have this whole scene. Also, your viewport um, samples can be at 32 if you want. That makes it easy for me to record. All right, so now let's click on uh, the render button and let's add some lights. Actually, we need to add them up here first so we can position them correctly. I'm going to hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. I'm going to click top. So shift A, I'm gonna get the light point and we're gonna get a point light. I'm gonna hit G and move it right here, right in the middle of this one. And I'm gonna hit shift D and move it in the middle of this one over here. And then really important, I'm gonna click on this point light, hit hold down shift, click on this point and then hold down control and click on the camera. I'm gonna hit control P for parent object. And the reason why we wanted to do that is so when the camera moves, I'm just gonna demonstrate that when the camera moves, the lights move in the same way and that's really important for uh, your lighting, unless you wanna make like random intermittent lighting, but that's uh, completely up to you. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view and I'm gonna click on the um, view tab. There we go, we have some lighting. So here in my lighting, I'm gonna give it 500. It's extremely bright, we'll make it light, nice and blue and then with this one over here, I'm going to make it very vibrant red and then give it 500 as well. It's overpowering the scene, but trust me, we'll make it better. So first thing we need to do, I'm going to click on this geometry here. In the uh, material settings, I'm going to click new and then I'm going to make it metallic and really dark. But if you've never dealt with geometry nodes, notice there's no material in this. So we need to go back to geometry nodes here. And then in the modifiers, click on Geometry Nodes Modifier, and we need to get a Set Material Node. If this is confusing to you, uh, why we need to add a new node, once you start learning more about Geometry Nodes, you'll know how you can kind of separate objects within a node tree, and that's when having this ability to set different material nodes is really powerful. Um, we'll go back here to Shading now. Notice we now have that material. So what I want to do is quickly mess with my roughness. So I'm going to get a uh, Shift A search color ramp, plug it into the uh, roughness here, and then we're going to get a noise texture and plug that in that factor into the color ramp. So what we want to do now with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled comes with Blender by default. I'm going to hit Control T, having that noise texture selected, and we'll use the object coordinates. So now we have some pretty reasonable noise textures going on here. So what I want to do is just crunch in that color ramp, give my detail to 12, bring my roughness pretty significantly high. And then we can just kind of play with this right here. So we'll do something like that, but make sure we do have a good amount that's just reflecting because we're going to play with lights. We want the lights to really mess with that reflective part. So if I click the render button here, we can see how that's looking, it's pretty cool. Now what we wanna do here in Cycles is add some volume. So I'm gonna click on the world. I'm gonna click on uh, volume. Right here in volume, click on principled volume and that is gonna give us a really cool look. I think this light is too far from my camera, the, uh, the red one. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key again. And um, this one right here, I want it to be a little bit closer to my camera. That was more than a little, but you get it. There we go. Now we're cooking. Uh, maybe, maybe that was a little too close. So I'm gonna hit G and maybe move it here. All right, yeah, that's looking really, really good. So now we have that. 
let's go ahead and animate our camera really quick. So I'm gonna hit the back arrow to frame zero. I do like it at 250 frames, so we're gonna leave it. And let's click on the camera, click on the constraints here, and go to zero. So being that we're dealing with um, constraint modifiers, we would normally do like a 360 degree rotation, but in this case, it's gonna be 100. So that'll make sense in a second. So click on the keyframe, We'll go to the end right over here and go to 100. That's gonna give you a 360 degree loop. Now we're working with this. Looks really, really cool. And if you wanna rotate your camera, you can do that as well. But keep in mind, if you're gonna rotate the camera, um, your lights are gonna to rotate too. So I would um, parent your lights to a different object that's going in a circle as well. But that that is completely up to, do, to you if you wanna do that. So now we have this whole uh, shenanigans. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna render it and uh, add some compositing. So I'm gonna hit the render button. All right, so once you have a frame here rendered, we're gonna go here to compositing. I'm gonna click use nodes, shift A, search, viewer, and then we're gonna plug a uh, the image to that. I'm gonna hold down shift and right click and um, Pull it over like that. So now whatever node we put in goes into the composite and the viewer. Let's go ahead and get a glare node. So this is gonna give us some lens flare. So notice that right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my iterations up to five, my fade a lot bigger. So now you can see that happening here. Bring your um, color module up and that's gonna give you this kind of weird RGB look. So I'm gonna bring the module more and then I'm gonna go ahead and give myself only two streaks and put my angle at 90. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this glare node. So that's going to double the effect of that. So instead of making your lights brighter, you can just add another glare node and that gives you um, more of this craziness. So we'll go back to layout and I'm just gonna go and pick a random frame, render it again to see if my compositing is looking good. So there we have it really good compositing. So we have just these crazy lens flares happening all over the place. And that's because our materials are relatively uh, reflective. And that's it. Um, this looks best in cycles, EV. It's still, you can still do it in EV. Just kind of have to do um, different volume settings and different lighting settings. Um, but they both look really, really good. But this is our scene. What I want to do now here is I'm going to get my export settings going. So here, we're gonna click on this little camera icon, I mean the printer icon, and then set where you want to save your um, file. If you wanna do a PNG sequences, uh, if you wanna do a PNG sequence, which I highly recommend for cycles renders, just keep it at PMG, and then just export it out to a file. But if you want it to compile an MP4 for you so you don't wanna deal with a PNG sequence, click on FFmpeg video on encoding, go to MP4, and then medium to perceptually lossless, hit the render button and you'll be done. And when you finish, you will have a really cool animation. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check out real-time materials, that is in the description and I'll see you in the next tutorial.